Welcome to another vlog. This week's theme is genetics. The reason I'm talking about genetics this week is because there are a number of genetic conditions that uh, cause disability. Um, so I want to talk a bit about that this week and it'll be somewhat of a precursor to some of the other disabilities and disorders that we'll be talking about later in this series. Um, I'm going to be releasing a video on Thursday in which I'll be talking about what genetics are, why they're important, and how they work. So subscribe if you want to see that video. But today what I want to talk about is a number of different types of genetic tests, some of which are used to test for actual genetic disorders and others that are used to test for other things. Um, there's 10 different types of genetic tests I want to talk about. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the first type of genetic test I want to talk about is called newborn screening, which, as the name makes it sound, takes place shortly after birth or right after birth. So it's basically used to screen newborns for genetic disorders that can be treated in infancy. Many jurisdictions automatically test newborns for a variety of different disorders. Um, the IWK hospital in Halifax, Nova Scotia, for example, on their website it says that they test all newborns for 15 or so different genetic disorders. Um, so newborn screening is, is a very common practice. Um, and obviously it's very important because it can determine very early in life how healthy a, a child's going to be depending on you know whether or not they're diagnosed with a condition and what kind of treatment they receive for that um, because you know on the surface it might sound like if a newborn's diagnosed with a disorder that's a serious thing but if they receive the proper treatment it's not really um, as serious as it could be um, so that's newborn screening so that brings us to the next type of screening called diagnostic testing uh, diagnostic testing takes place at any stage in life and basically what it's used for is to screen people for specific genetic conditions usually based on existing signs and symptoms but not always. So for example when I was a baby um, I showed some irregular symptoms where I had trouble um, you know it took me longer to learn to walk and things like that so I actually received some genetic testing they did a muscle biopsy and a liver biopsy and a blood test to screen me for a variety of different disorders based on the symptoms I was showing and that eventually led to my diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy when I was only 13 months old. So obviously I don't remember a lot about that but I do know that it happened. Um, the third type of testing is called carrier testing and basically what it's used to do is to determine if someone is a carrier of a specific genetic condition. So that basically means that they carry one recessive gene of a genetic condition that is recessive. So that means it requires two recessive genes for someone to inherit the disorder. But if you carry one of those recessive genes, um, since you only inherit um, one of each chromosome from each of your parents, that makes you a carrier. Um, so basically, carrier testing is to determine whether or not you are a carrier of a specific genetic mutation. Um, and to assess the parent's risk of having a child with a genetic disorder, especially in families with a history of that particular disorder. So my mother, for example, um, after I was diagnosed with Duchenne, she was tested to see if she was a carrier of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now, in our case, she was not a carrier because although some people inherit Duchenne muscular dystrophy from their parents, there is also spontaneous mutations and I just so happened to have gotten the spontaneous mutation that caused the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, but carrier testing isn't just used for Duchenne muscular dystrophy, it's used for a variety of genetic disorders. Then there's prenatal testing, which is number four, and that, as the name suggests, takes place during pregnancy. And basically it's used to screen a fetus for genetic disorders. One such type of prenatal testing is amniocentesis. Um, and again, it's, it's just a way to see if the child will have a genetic disorder and if they do, to get them the proper treatment so that they can live a full life. 
Um, but again, stressing that just because the child is diagnosed with a genetic condition doesn't mean that they're going to have a low quality of life. Um, it just means that now you know that they have a health condition and you can take the steps to manage that condition. Um, so that brings us to test type number five called pre-implantation testing or pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, which again, this actually takes place before pregnancy and it's used to test an embryo for genetic disorders, um, usually during assistive reproductive therapy. So for example, in vitro fertilization, which is when they'll actually take um, some eggs from the mother and then they'll fertilize them in a in a test tube outside of the body. That's why it's called in vitro, which means in glass. And then they'll implant the embryos into the mother's uterus in hopes of getting her pregnant. Um, anyway, so in this kind of testing, they test the embryo before it's implanted just to see if it's healthy. Um, which brings us to number six, predictive or pre-symptomatic testing, which usually takes place later in life. And that's used to screen for genetic conditions, specifically when no symptoms are present. Um, now, you might be wondering why someone would, would do that. Usually it's because their family has a history of a specific disorder. So, for example, your family might have a history of ALS, for example, and you might get tested to see what your risk of developing ALS is. Um, and then, again, it's good so that you can see what your risk of developing a certain genetic condition is, and you can take the steps to manage that if necessary. Um, so that's why that's kind of important. Now that's the end of the types of genetic testing that are actually used to test for genetic disorders. Um, now there's a couple more types I'd like to talk about. Um, so the first type is forensic testing. Um, now forensic testing you probably sounds familiar from crime shows. Obviously it's used to solve crimes and identify you know suspects and victims. Um, but it can also be used for things like um, determining biological relationships. So for example they'll use forensic testing sometimes as a paternity test. And then that brings us to the last kind, which is genealogical testing. Now I know what you're thinking, that's only eight types and you said there was ten. Well, there happens to be three types of genealogical testing. Those are autosomal DNA testing, Y-DNA testing, and mitochondrial DNA testing. And I'm going to explain what the difference is. So autosomal, autosomal DNA tests are used to trace your ancestry overall. So it tests the DNA on your autosomal chromosomes, that's the 22 pairs of chromosomes that are not your sex chromosomes, and that gives you a good overview of what your ancestral history is, um, usually combined with genealogical records for increased accuracy. Then there's the Y-DNA test, which is used specifically to trace the male line of ancestry, mainly because women do not have a Y chromosome. Um, so there's no way that it could be used to test the maternal line of ancestry. And then there's mitochondrial DNA test, which is basically the opposite of the uh, Y DNA test. It's used to trace the female line of ancestry using the mitochondrial DNA. So the mitochondria are a cell structure that converts molecules into energy. They're considered the powerhouse of the cell. Um, but mitochondrial DNA is only passed on by the mother because it's only influenced by the egg cells. Um, so mitochondrial DNA testing is used to um, trace the female line of ancestry. Um, so as you can see there's three different types of genealogical testing. I myself have never had any genealogical testing done but I'm very interested in doing it. But there are a lot of people who have um, and there's a lot of videos on YouTube about it which I encourage you to check out. Um, so I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did tune in Thursday for Thursday's video about genetics. Thanks for watching and see you then.